Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 20th of February. It's been a slightly fraught week, particularly in the US, and this is for a number of reasons. The recent blowout employment numbers from the States allied with some sticky inflation and also some fairly strong retail sales has reignited concerns that perhaps the Fed's interest rate hiking cycle isn't over just yet. That also has uh, similar implications in the, UK, in the UK. What it has also resulted in is something of a re- return to the strength of the US dollar, which has weakened sterling, uh, which in turn, of course, actually provides a boost for the FTSE 100, where a lot of the earnings come from overseas. In fact, the FTSE 100 did um, cross the 8,000 barrier for the first ever time earlier in the week. However, despite the slight comeback in markets uh, over the course of this rather fraught week, they do nonetheless remain in positive territory in the year to date. The Dow Jones is up by 1.7%, the S&P 500 by 6.5%, the Nasdaq by 13.3% and the FTSE 100 by 7.2%. Turning to next week, we've got the last two of the UK banks reporting their full year numbers after it has to be said what's been a fairly mixed showing so far. Certainly for the two that remain, HSBC and Lloyds, uh, there will be a couple of common themes that uh, investors will be looking particularly hard at, such as the level of dividends, any potential share buyback programmes, the level of credit impairments or bad loan provisions, uh, and also, of course, the capital capital cushion or CET1 ratio. Stocks specifically, HSBC, whose shares are up 13% over the last year or so, obviously have something of an exposure to Asia. And as we saw with Standard Chartered, the uh, travails of the Chinese real estate sector could have had an impact there. In addition, look out for any uh, decline in investment banking income. That's been a tough market for the last year or so. And whether HSBC is going to continue its fairly conservative approach in terms of what could be muted growth uh, in the year to come. For Lloyd's banking, a bit of a different story here. It's very much seen as a barometer for the UK economy. Shares are up just 2% over the last year, although more more lately they have been uh, rather more buoyant. The shares are up 23% uh, over the last three months or so. And of course, one of the reasons for that is that the UK economy has probably held up rather better than some had feared. So certainly in terms of Lloyd's, you'll be looking at things like mortgage growth, obviously the net interest margin uh, percentage now that interest rates have been on a rising uh, scale. Also, it's cost income ratio. Traditionally, it's the lowest in the sector and by some way. And what sort of uh, progress they're making on their moves towards digitization. Finally, we've also got uh, full year numbers from International Consolidated Airlines. This, of course, is the owner of British Airways. Uh, A similar story um, in as much as over the last six months, the shares are up 36%. But if we look back over the last year, that's not enough to repair the damage and the shares are down by 4%. Obviously, there's still repair to be done after the pandemic uh, and the borrowing that airlines had to undertake. There are more positively some signs that the cost of living crisis isn't yet impacting many uh, flyers' decision to travel abroad. We recently saw EasyJet return to profit, for example, which had something of a read across. But for international consolidated airlines and the British Airways part, look out to see what is happening to its business flights, obviously revenues, load factors and capacity, and whether indeed its own outlook comments give us some sort of clues to the summer season coming up. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.